Hello, welcome to day two of financial literacy. Um, you started yesterday with just talking about um, how to choose a career in the future, some things to consider. The answer to the exit ticket from yesterday was uh, first thing, it needs to be something that you're interested in. Um, you want to like your job. Um, the second thing was, is it going to provide you a good income? Um, is it going to cover all your expenses that you're going to have? And the third one was, is there going to be a demand for it in the future? You want a job that's going to last, right? That's going to be a need. Um, so that was the answer to the exit ticket. Um, today we're going to be talking about, well, now that I have a job, where's all this money going to go? Um, so um, a checking account is normally where you deposit your money. So we can have a checking account or a savings account. Savings account is just for you to put away money as an emergency fund. Maybe you're saving up for a big purchase. Um, once you put that money in the savings account, you're not really touching it. Um, so most of my money uh, goes into my checking account because I need to use it to pay my bills, my groceries, all my expenses. Um, the money gets there. So from my employer, um, Gallery Township Public Schools, they send the money directly to my checking account, which is called a direct deposit. So when you put money into your checking account, you're depositing money. Um, some places, um, the gym I work out, they give me a paper check. So I have to then go to the bank or go to an ATM or sometimes I use mobile banking, so an app on my phone to deposit the paper check into my account. And it's basically just like a permission slip or a contract between me and the gym. And the gym is saying, take money out of my account, this amount, and put it in this person's account. Um, so um, some things, I'm gonna read this bottom part. Paying by check is a safe way to pay for things because you give permission to only one company or one person to receive a specific amount of money. You can also use your checking account through ATMs and debit cards. Um, I'm not going to go into debit cards too much uh, right now because that's our next lesson. Um, but a paper check is a lot of times better to use um, than just cash. So. Uh, school book club, right? Um, parents send you a ten dollars, put it in your pocket. Ten dollars falls on the ground. Anyone can pick that up, right? We don't know who that ten dollars belongs to. If you use a check, you know your name's on it. The book company, the book fair's name is on it. Um, so that's a better way to keep track of your money because um, it's just more more safe. It's not just cash. All right, now that we are gonna get a checking account, there's lots of different options. So that's like our goal today is just to talk about, well, what are we looking for when we go to open up a checking account? Um, I have a checking account through Wells Fargo, so I'll be um, talking about that, but you could get a checking account through TD Bank, um, Santander, there's lots and lots of different banks. Um, so these are things to keep in mind when you go to get your first checking account. You need to look for an account with no monthly fees, um, some in the fine print will say, you know, you have to pay $5 a month, $10 a month, and you don't want to have to pay for a checking account. Most of them are free. Um, so definitely look for one that does not have a, a fee on it. Uh, compare accounts with low minimum balance requirements. So sometimes checking accounts require you to keep like $100 in the account at all time. And you can't go over that. Um, some have a minimum requirement of like $10. Some don't have any, so think about that because if you're putting money in, um, you have to keep track of it. So it might be easier to take out too much money if the um, minimum balance is high. Uh, look for no ATM fees, so Wells Fargo. If I use a Wells Fargo ATM, I do not have a fee, but if I use any other ATM, so if I go to Wawa or I'm in a rush somewhere and I just use any bank's ATM, I'll get a fee usually like 2 or $3. Um, compare online services. Uh, I like Wells Fargo because I use the mobile banking app. I can deposit checks. I can transfer money between accounts. Um, so I like a lot of online services. Consider a high yield account. Uh, this is where it gets a little complicated. Uh, most checking accounts have a low interest rate, meaning you will not earn a lot of money for having your money sit in that account. So when you put money into a bank, the bank is borrowing money from you. So they actually owe you money. They're saying, well, if you 
are putting this money into the bank and we're using it for other things, um, then we are going to give you a percentage of what you're putting in back to you. Um, savings accounts have a little bit higher of a, um, or a lot higher in most cases, uh, percent that they give back. So you can actually make a lot of money by having your money sit in those accounts. Um, a checking account is different though, because you're constantly putting money in, taking money out. Um, so it's more for just holding your money so that you have access to it. Um, so most don't have interest or they do, but it's very small. Um, I think I made like three pennies <laughs> last year. Uh, look for a sign up bonus. Um, so sometimes banks will like advertise and try and get you to sign up by saying, well, if you sign up with us, you automatically get $200, things like that. And then um, the FDIC insurance limits, when you start making a lot of money, um, you got to consider where you're putting your money. Um, because if that bank ever shut down or something happened, um, the FDIC will um, insure you for a certain amount. I think it's usually around $250,000. I think it varies. Um, but you want to make sure you know what that limit is because you don't want to put more into that just in case anything ever happened. You want all your money to be safe in that bank. Okay. So your freckle today, you're going to have 10 questions. Um, and they are going to be multiple choice. You don't need pencil and paper. Um, and just try your best. It's practice. And I will go over these questions um, the following day in case you have any questions. Okay. So this first one, which is an advantage of a checking account. So we want, what are the positives of having one? Having to pay fees, not fun. The uh, minimum balance requirement, uh, it's not a benefit, right? It's just sometimes one of the things we have to look out for. High interest, um, there's not really high interest in checking accounts. Um, and then access to an ATM. Um, so that would be a benefit that we would look for when looking for a checking account, access close to home or close to your work. Um, that's definitely a benefit or an advantage we want to look for. So I would choose that one as the best um, answer there. Okay, so it's going to be questions like that, disadvantages, advantages, um, some vocab that goes in with um, checking accounts is a deposit. So when I put money into my bank account, that's called a, a deposit. When I take money out of my checking account, that's called a withdraw. Um, if I take too much money out, so I go over my minimum balance or maybe there was none. So I now in, in the negative, I took out money that I didn't even have. That's called um, an overdraw. Um, and sometimes there are fees involved. So if I out uh, overdraw my account, meaning I took out too much money that I wasn't supposed to, um, there might be like a $30, $40 fee. So you want to look out for those um, and keep track of what you are depositing compared to what you are withdrawing. Um, any other vocab? I think that might be it. Um, so again, freckles, just practice. And then you have your exit question. Um, and if you want, you may watch the video of me going over the four questions from yesterday's assignment. All right. Goodbye, guys. Have a nice day.